This is Twit. Then I hear about JunoCam going along as kind of a public outreach instrument on on Juno, and I thought, this is this is new NASA. This is brilliant. You know, this is where where outreach, especially when you get citizen science involved, this is really just such a huge thing. And then those first pictures came in from the poles of all these little hexagonal storms and so forth, and it was jaw dropping. I mean, there have been some some big moments just personally for me in, in space flight, space exploration over the years, of course, Paul Levin and Viking and all that. But that was one of them, seeing this incredible, mysterious beauty coming in after you process these images was just draw dropper. So I wonder if you could talk about that a bit. We all were um, amazed uh, when we first saw those pictures too. I mean, it was just draw dropping, like you said, and you saw these polar cyclones and nobody had any idea of what Jupiter looked like at the poles. And so when we were putting together the, the mission, as you pointed out, um, the camera was put on in order, mainly because we all wanted to see what the poles looked like and we figured so did everybody else. And if, or, of course, if you're gonna connect to the public, you gotta have a camera. And the and the way um, the mission came to be is, is, you know, NASA had a kind of a sketch of an idea that we had helped with about the science that we would do. And a camera wasn't really required for the science objectives. But I couldn't imagine, and nobody else on the team could either, that we could go there without carrying one. So we slipped it in as a as an educational outreach tool, and um, and I, you know, worked with Mike Malin, who built a lot of the cameras for the Mars missions at the time, and said, you know, can you give me something simple? Uh, you know, I can't carry science requirements on it. I'll make we'll make it easy to build, but you know. We really need a simple camera that, you know, can capture these pictures. And he's like, yeah, well, let's do it. Let's do it. And of course, I didn't tell him, oh, we're going to be spinning. So it needs to, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, we need to, we, we need a simple camera. We'll just take a copy of what you've got from Mars. And he's like, okay, I can do that. And then I was like, oh, but we're spinning twice a minute. Does that matter? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, that matters. I need to collect the data a bit different. And I said, oh, and I'd like, you know, can you throw a methane filter onto it, too, so we could see, do a little bit of science in the sneak? And he's like, yeah, we do. I mean, he delivered. It was great. <laughs> his, whole, his whole team is awesome. And, um, and the camera had very unique requirements. It wasn't like any other space camera that really went out. And it was largely because, one, it was outreach focused, and two, we were going really fast and spinning, right? And and I wanted a picture of the pole. So I calculated the distance uh, that we were over the pole roughly. And I said, look, we got one shot. We have no space grip. We can't do mosaics. I can't move the space grip around to take a bunch of pictures. I don't have a scan platform like, like Cassini and Galileo had where you could move and do mosaics. I said, so I need a, a frame, framing, you know, that I can capture, you know, all of Jupiter's pole from this distance, one shot. And uh, they said, well, we have, you know, okay, we'll, we'll make it like that. And then we started looking at it. It's a lot like your smartphone uh, framing, you know, so it's, it's really good for, you know, tourist pictures, right? And so we're tourists of Jupiter, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so all those pictures, now it's turned out to be this incredible scientific tool as well, right? Um, everybody kind of knew that it was going to be that way, but we literally didn't have a Juno Cam science team tied to this. Um, I, but of course, the, we started analyzing it. And so then I said, well, I really want to just reach out to the public. And I had been part of um, Cassini Huygens where some data on the probe accidentally got out um, when they were landing on the moon Titan. And, um, and I discovered the, you know, the public were making these little movies from this data before the science team could. <laughs> and so uh, I said, you know, what if we designed it this way? I bet the public would make all the pictures for us. So we put together <laughs> this whole program and indeed they, you know, citizen scientists now, I mean, I don't think the term was around back when we first did this, but it was kind of new to NASA as well, but it's turned out to be a good success. And now there's a lot of people trying to work out citizen scientists. So I'm glad that we could help motivate and inspire that. And the, the, one of the most rewarding things is I would say, uh, uh, you know, half the pictures are people trying to do science, you know, or trying to make a beautiful picture. And the other ones are, are inspired in doing art, 
right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just, they're just, they're all over the map. You'll see pictures of, you know, things that come out that are just using your imagination. Um, and it's, uh, some of them are using their raw data. Some of them are using, you know, data that's put together. They stretch the colors, they put their, their cat into the picture. I mean, you, <laughs> you know, you can see all kinds of great stuff, but those pictures, those first pictures of the poles were jaw dropping. I mean, we just, and then we saw them in the infrared, right? Because we have an infrared instrument. And so you could see the whole thing in the infrared, uh, whereas the Juno cam, half of it was nighttime, right? Half was daytime because you're looking at the pole. Mm. But boy, when you see all those cyclones at the top, it's just like, wow, how did those get there? This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. If your IT training isn't raising your team to its highest level, you need ACI Learning. Prepare for certification examinations with practice questions. Retake tests so you're ready before you take your exam. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com twit for information on a free two-week trial for your team. <laughs> 